Hey Scorpios, how y'all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you had the most beautiful of holidays and I hope you have the most amazing new year in 2020. Um, we're gonna be doing your first half of January general reading here. Let's talk. First things first, you're going to have the most amazing spring of your life, okay? In terms of the season. <laughs> I actually do feel a bit of a springboarding uh, energy here, but the springtime, I literally saw the Scorpio Collective riding along on a bicycle while cherry blossoms are in bloom down this very gilded path and like sunshine and laughter and I'm telling you there's something about the springtime, it's going to be the best spring of your life, okay? It, it was the kind of feeling of knowing that you have plenty of work, like work that you love to do, lined up but you have this time to enjoy where you are, a bit of a downtime before that work begins. That's the best, when you have downtime to enjoy yourself, but you know that on the other side of it is work that you love to do and, and good income to come from it. Like, that is so delicious, I can't eat that. Um, I also got something kind of um, interesting. I heard Red Badge of Courage, which I believe is a Civil War movie, I think. And then I saw Robert Redford. And I'm not exactly sure what it means. <laughs> Robert Redford, I mean, he's been in the entertainment business for a really long time. His career has had a beautiful longevity and he's aged splendidly. But let's see if he comes up again. But that's what I saw, Robert Redford. Um, I also saw the Two Towers from Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. I saw you passing through a certain point. Um, almost like you're in the in-between, passing through a certain gateway and coming out the other side. That feels like uh, this month going into February for you. And then once you hit springtime in March, it's like full steam ahead. So it's almost as if January and February is kind of a beautiful opportunity to ready set yourself. I mean, it's gonna be active, darlings. But ready set yourself before really springboarding into the rest of the year um, come March time, okay? Ooh, also the animal that came through right away. Ooh, I just saw 222 on the timer. <laughs> I pointed at you like I'm accusing you. I saw 222. <laughs> um, I saw a whale immediately, and I heard sound therapy, sound healing, echo transmission, echo uh, sonar waves, something, something. But the whale is about deep feeling, but it's it's not feeling overwhelmed by those feelings. It's It's really using, you know, this came up in another reading. Which one was it? I fit more than one, but your emotions, your emotions is the, f is the gas, right? That fuels your intuition. I feel like I've said that all day today, but your emotions are the gas that fuel your intuition. So you can only really be receiving clear guidance from an intuitive standpoint if your emotions are balanced and well tended to, okay? And the whale represents that, stunning. All right, Ooh, what's the animal energy for my Scorpio for first half of January? I keep hearing it, March into April, March into April, March into April. Wait a minute, did you guys get swan last time? Hmm. Um, okay, so we have the swan here, absolutely stunning water energy here. This speaks, I, this is, I swear you got this last time or the time before, something, something. Anyway. So this is about, you know, beautiful reflective surface, seeing yourself clearly as you truly are, right? Your essence point. Sometimes it can be really easy, especially um, when we have yet to break free of programming uh, from our childhood, programming from even adulthood, right? Especially if we are coming from a background where a large amount of emphasis was placed on how we look or didn't look. Something about that, darlings. I feel like you're stepping into a point, stepping into a place where part of a platform that you are assuming and taking, lovingly taking on and assuming is speaking the truth behind the power in loving exactly what you see. Not looking in the mirror and going, I would change this, I would edit this, I don't like this about myself, if only I could blah, 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 right? No, it's really going, actually, I love what I see and I am becoming a beacon for the others out there. I'm hearing the word others. Others for me represent anyone that falls outside of the societal norm or standard of what is lovable, quote, what is conventionally attractive, quote, 
right? There has been this reoccurring theme in your readings, my, my darling Scorpios, of revolution and uh, being a beacon and a point of hope for the underdog, for the underprivileged, for the outcasts, for those who fall outside of the societal norm. And I'm really feeling that with this wine energy. Now also, this also represents counterparts, divine uh, feminine, divine masculine energy coming together. Also about the divine feminine and masculine that lives within all of us, having a balanced relationship within that, which is just another way of saying that we give and receive in equal measure, right? When we give and receive in equal measure, that is the sweet spot. It's just like I said, when I saw you guys in the spring, having vacation time before it gets really, really busy with the good work. That's what it is. That's what this feels like to me. It's very vibey. Traditionally speaking, swans represent romantic love as well. Okay? Wait a minute. Oh, how did I miss this? Okay. I'm going to make an obscure musical reference. It should come as no surprise. There's a musical called Honk, which is the story. It's a, it's a British musical. Uh, I think it's from the 70s, maybe. And... Um, the, there's, it's the story of the ugly ducking, duckling and how it turns into a swan. There's something here about the ugly duckling turning into a swan, but it's not because the physical, uh, you know, the outer uh, appearance changes necessarily. It's about embodying, no longer seeing yourself as an ugly ducking, duckling. And in doing that and making that internal shift, you become the swan. Ooh, hoo -hoo. All right. Let's see what's going on for Scorpio. Scorpio. It does feel like a love infusion too. It just feels really happy. <laughs> okay. So nine of swords. This is the past energy coming in that, that may or may not affect the present. So what I want to go to immediately are these fabulous flowers. Because I was seeing a lot of flowers around the springtime, right? So I feel like this is directly speaking to what I was just saying about the ugly duckling and the swan thing. Remember when I said before we have broken out of our conditioning, right? That can come in many different forms, like I said. We can definitely be in this nine of swords place of what keeps us up at night. Nightmares, old versions of ourselves that come back to haunt us in our dream state. We can feel really strong during the day sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm reciting my mantras. I'm staying in a place of gratitude and self-love. I'm eating my spiritual Wheaties, all of that good stuff. Then sometimes our subconscious will come a calling in the nighttime and it's like, hey, you still have this left to heal. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's almost like an inner child for some of y'all going, look at me. Damn it, look at me. Don't yell at me, don't scold me, don't ignore me, do not ignore me. Look at me. And in doing so, look at us. Okay, something in that. But I feel like the whole point of this is that in doing this, you are becoming very well versed in how to help others do the same. Do you understand? Sometimes our biggest lessons are our lessons so that we can turn around and help others who have the same lesson, right? We can't help others if we haven't been through that ourselves first, right? Something in that. And I think that if you can flip it to that humanitarian lens and that perspective, it, it, it's the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down. You know what I mean? Why is she wearing a hat to bed? Do you see how she's wearing a hat to bed? Worst case scenario, thinking is a thing of the past. Waiting for the other shoe to drop. If any of you have been in a place or, or at any given time or prone to be in a place of, well, when things are good, something bad is gonna happen to balance it all out, let that die. Okay? All right. That was a little intense, but you're Scorpio. You can roll with that. <laughs> I just had this feeling because she's going to sleep with this hat on like she's ready for the worst. She's ready to run. She's, she's waiting for that other shoe to drop, right? You guys are moving out of that. Wow. Ooh, the moon at the bottom. Listen, nine of wands coming in after the nine of swords. Let's talk about this. Nine of wands. You know, this is feeling, by the way, 
the wands rule the realm of, of artistry and desire and passion and forward direction, all that good, good. Nine of Wands is gorgeous because it shows a true perseverance, right? Why do I feel like this entire thing is about breaking out of your programming? Wait a minute. Oh my God. It's the Black Mirror episode. Okay, there is a Black Mirror episode. I don't know which season, darling, but it's a Black Mirror episode called Hang the DJ where this couple break out of this programmed system and in doing so find true freedom and liberation and find that the system was of their own design and making anyway and that they had the keys to the prison all along. All they had to do, Dorothy, was click their heels three times to go home. There's something here. I think you might be waking up to some self-imposed limitations that are revealing themselves in your dream time or in your downtime, and then you're going, oh my God. I'm really glad because now I can let that go. I feel like for a group of you, this is inner child stuff, okay? Now, nine of wands. What do we like to say about this key? Wounded warrior, yada, yada, yada. Look at this bandage. Look at this bandage on this homegirl's head right here. This is feeling, oh, I just saw 11-11 on the timer. You better work. Oh, and the mirror thing here too. I definitely associate this with 11-11, okay? Signs and synchronicities and faded events, okay. So the Knight of Wands is also feeling the need. It's like perseverance, but it's also feeling this need to protect what you've worked so hard to achieve, right? I will protect this at all costs. I will protect, you know, my mental health. I will protect my emotional well-being. And if that means saying no to you and you and you and Stu, then I will say no to all y'all. I'm going to make changes that benefit and protect my health wealth, sanity, love, et cetera, et cetera. It's almost as if I'm feeling like a vibrational vacuuming. And I feel like the reason for this vibrational, and I feel like the vibrational uh, vacuuming comes via setting really healthy but firm boundaries. That's what I'm getting. I feel like some of y'all, this is boundaries with other people, but I also feel like this is boundaries with yourself. Be mindful of your thoughts. Anything that comes up, face it to release it. And those of you who have been up in bed crying and, and all of this stuff, th those we can take this literally, that has been a running theme moving from 2019 into 2020. It's that solar eclipse moon energy. And if you roll with it, like the whale energy, okay. If you roll with it and don't deny it or push it down, you're exactly where you're meant to be. Okay? But Nine of Wands is a concerted effort and keeping on going. Do you see how this Nine of Wands lady is looking at the Nine of Swords lady like, girl, get up out of bed, and if you need to just place your weight on a wand to stand upright, then do it. Because we gonna look cute anyway. Look at our little outfit. Okay. All right. Something to do with family. I feel like some of you guys either spent holiday with family where it was like a little bit could have brought some things up to the surface and or, you know, this time of year especially uh, can put us in a place of, of nostalgia and sometimes nostalgia can be sweet and lovely, but sometimes nostalgia can cut like a knife, right? Hmm. Feels very positive though. You're doing the good work is what I want to say. You're doing the good work so you can help others do the good work, okay? Ugh. Ha, duh. First of all, at the bottom of the deck, you have Six of Cups, which is soulmate, nostalgic, love, and childhood memories. And I've been talking about inner child and childhood things. So there you are um, with your water sign energy here. King of Pentacles, don't you know that's what it is? Um, Earth sign energy here. Uh, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Right? This is material abundance, darling. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a dang minute. Doesn't this look like the springtime? Actually, Taurus's birthdays are on the springtime, ain't it? Though, I'm obsessed. I feel so much spring from a new brain. Uh, yes, a lot of musical references. You know, get with it. <laughs> There's a song from a musical called A New Brain. Actually, I feel like that's really pertinent and poignant. A new brain um, called I Feel So Much Spring. Um, 
It's beautiful. So this is about material health, wealth, and abundance. This is about being in a beautiful place of receptivity and letting yourself be nurtured and looked after. I feel like I'm connecting in with a collective of you who's used to being in a masculine energy. Again, I'm not speaking of gender, how boring. I'm talking about a masculine energy of, you know, bringing home the bacon making it work, getting it done, fixing it, going after it, right? And I feel like you're being called, uh, you know, around all of this, right? To also in tandem, give and receive an equal measure. Let yourself be nurtured and taken care of. Don't you take care of others like a lot? Yeah. Letting yourself be, it does not mean, that does not translate to you're weak or, you know, you're overly needy, okay? True strength lies and vulnerability. Brene Brown all day, every day, honey. If you have not read Brene Brown, read her, okay? True strength lies in vulnerability. I feel like you are discovering that in a whole new way coming up here, and it's gorgeous and stunning in Capricorn season, okay? All right. I feel like that's part of your message, too. People are going to find so much strength as you showcase your, and it, no, as you reveal your own vulnerability. And as a Scorpio, okay, and I can relate to you on this in such a big way, not just because I'm a Scorpio moon, but because I'm an Aquarius. We love, we love, love, love. I don't even want to say secrets, but we love our privacy. Do you know what I'm saying? We need, it's like a need to have things that are just our own. We don't want to expose every thought and feeling to the stimuli or energy or imprint of others. It feels wrong. We can love someone more than anything in the world, and we will still feel the need to keep some things for ourselves, not to ourselves, for ourselves. Right? But I feel like you are finding that the more that you reveal around your mission work, around what you're here to do on the soul plane, using your voice to communicate what you know, what you've learned, and what you've heard. Na uh, Nako? N-A-H-K-O. Is that how it's pronounced? Nako the bear? Nako medicine for the people? That's coming through. If you're familiar with that artist, he's like a, a wonderful musician whose platform is, it feels very aligned with this. I wonder what his sign is. But his platform feels very aligned with what I'm tapping into here, okay? Medicine for the people, you don't say. Feels like th there's a connective link there. Okay, let's go right to the Nine of Swords. But you're realizing, like the more that I reveal and, and let other people see, they're deriving strength from my vulnerability. And so somehow, it's just all worth it. Darlings, two of swords. To clarify the Nine of Swords, this is exactly what I was saying already. Two of swords is an obstruction of view, right? It's taking a moment to just, okay, let me just pause. Okay, let me just pull over to the side of the road, right? An obstruction of view, a, a cause for pause. Things are being revealed in your dream time or meditation time, as it were, or in your downtime. Things are gonna be illuminated for you, things that have yet to be healed or points of, um, how do I say this? Aspects of yourself that could use a little gardening, okay? Whether that's inner child or, or whatever have you, okay? Aspects of yourself that need gardening are gonna be brought up, okay? It's a beautiful thing though, it's a beautiful thing. We should embrace that stuff. So it's like, oh, thank God, like let me know because I'm trying to win it live. So don't keep nothing from me, universe. Like, come on, inner psyche, like show me everything that needs, <laughs> with the flowers, that needs gardening, gardening. Let me water my own garden so that others can, you know, enjoy the fruits of that labor. Okay, I'm trying to heal the planet, huh, Scorpio? We better work. All right, nine of wands. <laughs> Showing up as the three of cups, you better work. Listen, three of cups is soul reunion, it's deep friends, it's chosen family, honey. Okay, why do I wanna say that? Chosen family. There's something about family here, and I don't know exactly what it is. I feel like holidays can bring up stuff, like I said. But there's something here about chosen family. Maybe that's part of your platform or what you're here to communicate, okay? About chosen family, what that looks like, um, how you can, you know, just because you're related to someone by blood does not mean you owe them a damn thing, okay? Anyway. 
Three of Cups, to clarify the Nine of Wands. This is major cause for celebration, but I feel like you're very supported by your tribe, okay? I feel like they're the foundation. I feel like they're watering the roots here and going, we have got you. I feel like whoever I'm connecting with has some damn good friends. Damn good chosen family. Thick and thin type vibe, right? But this is major cause for celebration and good times. I almost feel like they're saying like, keep on going, you're almost there, you're almost there to a king of pentacles place where you are just in a place of like high, high, high prosperity and abundance, okay? I also feel like you're gonna be fielding offers. I feel like people are gonna be drawn to you for mentorship or your opinion about things. Like, what's your opinion of this? What's your advice around this, okay? I do feel like you're gonna be like a mentor in a mentorship position or at least have the opportunity to do it. I, you know, it's up to you whether or not you take that on. Clarify for King Pentacles. New York, New York. Okay. New York, New York. If I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. I'm just drawn to this New York City skyline and the, if anybody lives in a major city, um, you might find that you want to kind of relocate to the suburbs, somewhere a little more quiet, or um, somewhere that just has a little less stimuli. Also, I feel like this is really specific. Some of you guys are gonna be going to a retreat or holding a retreat or getting the idea. I'm seeing like a feminine writer's group retreat or like a feminine something. We're coming together in a retreat formation to you know nurture each other and support each other in the Divine Feminine Collective. Something that's very specific, but it's for somebody and I'm obsessed. Okay. And I feel like it's outside of the city limits for whoever that's for, all right. Someone's getting new furniture as well. I don't know why that matters in life, but I just heard that. Someone's got new furniture. So, clarifier for King of Pentacles is strength. Look at this Goldilocks sitting on this bear here, living a life. You know, and I just said about you know, more of a rural landscape, and then this queen is resting in the woods. <sighs> Do you see how she's wearing a red dress here? Strength number eight key, which is also eight, is the number of material abundance, okay? Um, there's this idea, you know, this root chakra, because red is, uh, corresponds to the root chakra, which governs our feelings of security around material things and home life, right? <sighs> okay. You know, traditionally, this is depicted as a lion who is known as the king of the jungle, and then we have the king of pentacles. You are not just, I keep on wanting to say it, ascending. I feel like you are ascending to a place where you're going to get there and just go, my God, I want for nothing. I, I, it took a hell of a lot of work and time to get here, but now I feel like I'm sitting in this place, not just of gratitude, but of true perspective. Okay, you're gonna write something. I, they keep telling me, um, journals, articles, um, what is that, blogs or uh, TED Talks? Uh, TED Talks, um, books, um, articles, writing something, okay? Because pentacles, yeah, very much of that realm, writing something, writing it down. Now is it, now it is very important to write, okay? Very important to write. Because I feel like you're going to want to document right now so that you can look back later and go, oh my God. Okay, they're showing me something very specific. Carrie Bradshaw, let's talk about it. Sex in the City. When she got offered her first book deal, they were like, just give us all of your best um, articles that you wrote for the newspaper. So she, all she had to do was write a forward. That is very pertinent. I feel like some of you guys are gonna wanna document journal style what's going on right now, and then part of whatever this is you're writing in the future, whether it's an article, book, or whatever, it's already written because you've already documented it documented it up until this point. And writing it in real time is gonna be much more effective than, than um, writing it in the future and trying to remember what it was like in the moment, okay? That's really important for somebody. Do better work, go get your empire, boo. All right. Let's get a gorgeous guidance for my sculpts. <laughs> okay, I actually feel like the bottom is for you too. Okay, Guinevere true love, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. Remember when I said that the swan is very much about romantic love? I'm really obsessed with this, but I gotta take it to another place for a moment. I gotta take it to another place for a moment. 
Remember when I said that this is about looking in the mirror and really loving what you see without edits, without additions, without subtractions? That's what I feel like the main key of this is. Yes, do I feel like you guys are linked up or linking up with a true soulmate who fills your heart with joy and 1111 and all of that? Yes, but why do I want to say that that's besides the point? <laughs> It, I, it, it feels besides the point. It's like yada, yada, yada. But here's how you're changing the world. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I feel like this true love is something that you are embodying for and within yourself. And it's emitting through these vibrational waves that are affecting everyone in your atmosphere. And I'm obsessed. You know, also these lilies speak of a purity as well. Again, I, I mean, I, I'm really feeling this childhood thing. You can even be looking at pictures of your childhood or, or yourself as a child and going like, wow, where is that girl or that boy in me now? Right? When I look in the mirror, can I see that kid? Okay. Guinevere. King Arthur. Right? Guinevere was the consort of, of King Arthur or Lancelot or something to do with that. Red string of fate. You're exactly where you're meant to be right now. I'm also getting a special em um, message about emeralds. Emeralds, uh, color green, color of the heart chakra. Emeralds, 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 emeralds. When is the birthstone for emerald? Is that May? Whenever the birthstone for emeralds is, it's a very pertinent, uh, poignant time, something to do with emeralds. Okay, I'm obsessed. Oh, Emerald City, Emerald City, I was talking about Dorothy, but emeralds, something about emeralds, okay? And now I feel like this, oh, Green Tara, hello. Green Tara, uh, start delegating. Ask others, including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything by yourself. Why do I feel like this is so beautifully pertinent for you? Let me read that again for the seats in the back. Ask others, including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything by yourself. I feel like this is directly commenting on this wounded warrior situation and calling upon your chosen family and your tribe to help uplift and support you. You don't always have to be strong. The strength is in the vulnerability, right? Okay, my darling Scorpios, I think I run my mouth enough. Um, I am not worried about you at all. This is absolutely epic. At the end of the day, you keep getting swan as your energy, which is just <laughs> all about love and purpose and truth and clarity and water for my water sign. And you know I love it when that happens. So at the end of the day, you're exactly where you're meant to be. Um, and I'm just, I'm just really happy for y'all. So you better work and get it, Scorpio. With that being said, this is your first half of January general reading. I so hope this helped and resonated with you. If so, please let me know in the comments below. You know I live for that. Um, and as always, just thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate every single one of y'all for taking the time to watch. And as always, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.